I wanted to make a secondary video about DeepSeek because I've been getting lots of questions from peers and from friends talking about what does this mean because it's all over the media, it's being talked a lot as far as this changes everything. Well, it doesn't quite change everything. Uh, make sure you check out my previous video talking about this. But the big thing to understand is that, yes, this is a major competitor. Why is it a major competitor? Because it, supposedly it's been able to do much, much more with less. The idea here is that it was trained with uh, uh, using a lot less money, right? Instead of 500 million, it was trained with 5 million, 6 million, way less. Now, the idea here is that we're taking their word for it because they didn't have access to all the advanced chips that a company like OpenAI did, or so we think. Um, and there's other aspects as far as how was they able to do this as far as the training debt is concerned. So there's some concerns there because there's more and more evidence coming that seems to suggest that they extracted a lot of this from OpenAI, meaning that they would simply go in using an API to feed it information as far as asking questions and then get information out of the AI, the open AI, uh, as far as from their model. Then they would have that, put that to train their model as well as synthetic information. And now you've got a brand new model and you didn't have to spend so much money on your training data. That's a possibility. It was probably a mixture of some of that. But the big thing is that they've also changed a lots of things as far as our understanding of how to best process things. So this is able to do so much because of some of the architecture that they've used as far as the different ways of maximizing its capabilities. This is important because this then translates to how much it costs to actually use their AI model. So this is a high performing model. I've tested it myself. I think it's comparable to ChatGPT. Um, there was some aspects that I thought ChatGPT was better, but this is supposed to be on par with O1 in its capabilities, meaning that it can reason, it can start to give you a chain of thought as far as what it's thinking once it's actually trying to answer your question. So it's very powerful with that in its capabilities. It also has some multimodal capabilities that it can analyze images to extract text. So that's very powerful. Does this change everything? No, it doesn't change everything. We're still gonna have NVIDIA, we're still gonna have OpenAI. This is a model that's coming from China. So that should have at least a little bit of concern in that what's going on, what's the purpose of all this? This is greater competition and competition is good because that forces the other AIs, whether that's the other companies in the United States or companies in Europe to compete more. And that should mean more product for us at a cheaper price, which is excellent, that's capitalism. So we have that to look forward to. And the thing is that DeepSeek isn't the only one. There are other AIs coming from China that will increase the competition. We have things from Alibaba and from other places that, hey, they're competitors too. So keep an eye out on that. Do I trust DeepSeek? Um, I trust it as far as using it for some aspects. Um, would I sign up for their API? I don't think so, not yet, because I wanna make sure that there are ethical aspects that are being fully addressed. So that's sort of an ongoing investigation right now. We'll, we'll see what happens. It is much cheaper. So that is gonna be a motivator for a lot of companies. So that's why it's always important for us that whenever we use any product, we're looking at the terms of service, meaning what is my data gonna be used for? Is it safe and secure? Well, if you look into DeepSeek, they tell you, hey, yeah, we're gonna use your data. We're gonna use it to, to train our model. That, that's normal, but still that's something to be cognitive of as far as do I wanna put in all of my data into this. So I would suggest you use it just like other AIs, but I would be a little bit more sensitive as to what I put in there, but it's still another usable option. This is also really important for academia because as we see this greater amount of attention that's being brought upon this, and we see how this affects the stock market, this is more of an opportunity for those of us in academia to see the value, the importance that AI is playing in the real world, whether that's in business and economics in all different aspects, because this is, this is really getting the attention of the United States, of the government, all these things come into play. So that should mean more opportunity for us in academia, more research, more, more understanding. This is all needed. So we definitely need to be a part of this as it moves forward. So yet another reason to ensure that we're helping ourselves and helping our students develop AI literacy. The big thing is that, hey, this isn't the end of the world that some people are talking about. Everything is still gonna move forward, but this does change some things. Um, this isn't the best AI, I don't think so. Uh, 
I think it's a little bit more prone to more hallucinations in my testing. And I think part of that is because of the way that it's been trained with a lot of secondary data, a lot of synthetic data. And again, you can use synthetic data appropriately, but I think there's just a little too much of that, which causes some more hallucinations to occur. But it's still very functional for a lot of different things. So definitely test it out, see what you think. Uh, don't fully invest in DeepSeek yet. Uh, because there's lots of things going on and there's lots of development here. So we'll see, keep an eye on it, but there's more developments coming. So this isn't the end. And this goes along with what I've been saying in the past, as far as in another video where I talked about how AI is not slowing down in the least bit and it's not running out of data. And the fact that we have DeepSeek now is a prime example of that, how it was able to synthetically, to use synthetic data successfully and it's able to improve the architecture. So in both sense, not slowing down, continuing development, and not running out of data. So there's a lot going on here. And remember, learning is for life. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you staying around until the very end. Please be sure to like and subscribe and share so that we can continue to develop our community. Bye-bye.